Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping, and in this video I want to talk about what is probably the most important and most critical prep that you can start with if you get into emergency preparedness and prepping. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is water and water storage. It's easy to set up, store, and forget about water. You can pretty much just put it away somewhere and you're good to go. You can get enough water to last a family of four. Uh, for about three to four weeks with all the containers, preservatives, etc., probably for under 250 bucks. And it's easy to get focused on gear and gadgets when you first get into prepping, but water is really the first thing that you should be concerned about and really focus on when you start prepping. So in this video, we're gonna discuss um, a few different things here. Number one, the importance of water. Number two, the type of storage containers available on the market. Number three, where to store your water. Number four, how to, how to prepare your storage containers and water for long-term storage. How much water should you store? Places you can find water in a situation where the infrastructure in your area has been damaged and making water safe to drink. So the first subject matter is the importance of water. You can't live uh, longer than three days without water. Food, you can go you know, roughly three weeks or so, but water is not gonna happen. Your body depends on it and after a certain period of time, it will start shutting down if it doesn't get it. On the other hand, just taking in water itself is not uh, the solution. You've gotta have good, clean, sanitary water because ingesting unsanitary water with pathogens can result in severe illness resulting in death. If we look at the recent situation that's been happening in Flint, Michigan, you can just see how, um, how much damage it does to a community when clean, fresh water is not available. Uh, that community is going through a lot of challenges simply because they don't have clean water. So many things that we do on a daily basis, they require water, whether it's drinking, cooking, cleaning, bathing, even using the toilet. If the water was not available and not coming out of the tap, should there be an emergency or a catastrophe in your area, what would you do when it comes to water? The average American, they use 80 to 100 gallons of water a day. And in a grid down scenario, you can get by on about one gallon of water per day per person in your household. There's even websites like ready.gov that recommend you have at a bare minimum three days of water uh, on hand per person. I was watching TV the other day a few weeks ago and on Conan O'Brien, uh, they even had a, a, a whole segment about preparing for an emergency. And when Conan O'Brien asked the guests on the show, uh, what people should be doing to prepare her advice was store up a lot of water and I'll provide a link to that episode in the uh, description below it's really important that you if you're gonna get into prepping and emergency preparedness that you first focus on water because again that is hands down apart from your you know shelter that's gonna be one of the most important things you'll need so the next question becomes well, what can I store water in what, what do I use well most of us will, in the prepping community, and you'll see this a lot of times, you'll see people using different type of polymer plastic storage containers. Um, and what you're going to look for is on the bottom, you'll see a little stamp. It will say PETE or PET. And these are uh, the type of grade of plastic that's safe for drinking out of. I have several different types of storage containers in my home. I've got five gallon stackable um, plastic containers. These are like a dark blue. And I'll provide a link in the description below. I've also got seven gallon non-stackable water containers and um, these are also really great these five gallon and seven gallon um, I've got them in different places the five gallons obviously I try to stack them where I can the seven gallons I slide them into areas that are, I can't necessarily stack them but these are both great options especially when it comes to being in a bug out situation where you have to leave them uh, quickly because the next item we'll talk about is a 55 gallon water storage container and I've got several of these in my garage um, but in an emergency, you can't really move those around. You can't throw in the back of your truck and head out of town. With a five gallon and seven gallon, you can. So I keep a lot of those on hand as well. When it comes to 55 gallon water containers, um, you'll hear a lot of myths online about don't store it on cement. You know, basically from what I've read, you don't want to store it on hot cement. I put two by fours under my 55 gallon water storage containers. I just don't want them resting on the ground. Maybe I bought into the myth. Um, so I'll provide a link to you know different websites where you can pick up these 55 gallon storage containers um, you know these I keep these in the garage I would love to keep them in the house and I'll talk about where to store them here in a second you're gonna need when you pick up one of these 55 gallon you're gonna need a bung wrench to open up the you know the cap on the top of the storage container and you're gonna need a water pump to extract the water out and one of the things that I definitely recommend before you store your water containers, make sure you put a date on them and put any relevant information. For example, on mine, 
you know, I, I put the date when I uh, originally stored them, prepped them, put water preservative in them, and explain how long the water preservative is good for. And so that way I can always go back and look and I can know when I have to rotate them next. The next question becomes, where do you store your water container? The most important thing is to store it out of sunlight. Sunlight encourages bacterial growth in your water. And ideally, you want to store it in a cool, dry place, uh, around 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, most of my water I keep under um, our stairwell and our closet. It's a really cool place. Uh, it never really gets hot there. And I store them in different places in our house, uh, in closets. And again, I make sure I cover them up. I also store my 55 gallon in the garage. It's not the ideal place because it can get really hot in the garage. And it's not a place that's going to be cool. But unfortunately, I don't have the space in my house. And you may run into the same issue. If I have the option, I would store them in the house, but I don't have the option. If you do store them outside, make sure you cover them up with a tarp or something that will keep the sunlight off of them. The next question is, how do you prepare your storage containers and water for long-term storage? First of all, if you're going to use water containers, make sure you purchase some that have not been used. In other words, get them brand new. Those are the ones that you're going to want to ultimately use for your drinking water. Now, you can find great deals if you go on Craigslist or other websites or garage sales. You'll find a lot of times used water containers, 55 gallon, etc. And I picked up a few of those in the past for really good deals. Um, the ones that are used that I don't know the history on them, I don't put our drinking water in that water that I'm going to rely upon that in the situation where we you know, need drinking water, I wouldn't want to rely on those. I use those for, you know, uh, in the event of an emergency, you're going to need uh, water for, again, basic sanitation, things like washing your hands, taking a bath, uh, flushing, you know, flushing your toilet, um, you know, maybe even doing the dishes. But those are things that I don't want to actually take in and, you know, uh, drink. Whenever I have two 55-gallon water drums that, again, I picked up at a garage sale and I got a great deal on them. And again, I just use those for <clears throat> basic sanitation needs. And in both of those, I've added about a fourth cup of unscented bleach into those. So before you use even water containers that are brand new, you're going to want to make sure you sterilize them by throwing in some bleach and water on the inside and, you know, swishing it around really good and making sure all the surfaces uh, get contact. Again, uh, just a basic combination of unscented bleach and water. The one thing that I've done in all the water that I'm going to use for drinking is I've added water preservative. I'll provide a link in the description below. Uh, a lot of times people say, hey, you know, if the water comes out of the tap, it's already treated with chlorine, so you'll be safe. Um, I just use to add water preservative into all my water containers. It's not that expensive. You can pick up water preservative on Amazon for less than $10, and it'll treat up to 55 gallons of water. So that's just what I choose to use. Again, I think it's kind of a cheap insurance policy than rather assuming that the chlorine that's in the you know, water in our tap will take care of it and uh, keep the water preserved for a long period of time. So... Whenever you're done filling these containers up, after you've cleaned them out really well, you want to cap them off so no contaminants or air get inside. And uh, again, I'll provide a link in the description below to the CDC website where they talk about prepping uh, water containers. It has a lot of great information there. The next question that often comes up is how much water should you store? Uh, what I always encourage people to do is just at least at a bare minimum have a three-day water supply uh, in your house for everybody. So. I always encourage people, at, at a bare minimum, you need at least a three-day water supply on hand. Uh, and that's three days of water for each person. So if there's four people in your house for three days, that's 12 gallons. So you want to start there and then work up. I've, at this point in the game, I'm up to about a month. Uh, over the next you know, year, I'm going to try to build that up to you know, two or three months. I'm going to continue adding on different options. Starting out with three days can literally be done under $10. You can go to the grocery store and pick up the plastic, you know, little like two and a half gallon water containers for I think about a buck, a buck fifty. Put that somewhere in a cool, dry place, and that's the first starting point right there. And again, they're in, in an emergency situation, those are easy to move around. And they also can be used on a daily basis. You may go to a picnic or something, and they're great to have. So think practically, think of something that you can use. Once you start in the three days and work up to two weeks and then a month and go from there. Places you can find water in a situation where the infrastructure in your area has been damaged. If, again, you know, some type of catastrophe happens in your area, um, you can get water from the back of your toilet in the tank. That's assuming that you have it put in kind of cleaner or, you know, anything like that in it. So that's, you know, it's safe. 
I personally would probably boil it, but it's safe to drink. Um, hot water heater in your garage. Most people don't think about this, but it holds roughly 50 gallons. And a lot of times you, there's a little, you know, just valve at the bottom you can open up and get the water out of. Uh, pipes in the house. I live in a two-story house, so whenever we drain the water, obviously the pipes upstairs, you know, they go first, then you turn the ones downstairs and, you know, they empty out. And you can even get, you know, the water will store um, at the very, very bottom of the pipe. So there's ways you can extract and get those out, uh, the water out of the pipes. Uh, having a rain catchment system is something I currently don't have, but I plan on building down the road. Um, and that's a really good option. And one that's a lot of times people bring up is a pool. You know, sometimes people may argue, well, I have a pool, so do I really need to store water? Yeah, you do. Um, you're assuming that that water in an emergency doesn't get contaminated. What if there's radiation fallout? What if, uh, you know, you go down the list of what ifs, it's sitting out in the open, it can easily get contaminated. So what, a pool would be my last of last of last options. You know, if I had no other option, even then I'm gonna have to really uh, boil it, treat it, probably filter it, and let's talk about that point next. The next point is how do you make water safe to drink? And we'll talk about boiling, treating, and filtering. The first one is boiling. Bringing water to a rolling boil for about three to five minutes, it's going to kill most of the waterborne, uh, waterborne microorganisms. However, just because you boil it, it's not going to necessarily take out toxic contaminants. Um, also remember that whenever you boil, that means you have to use fuel. Fuel is valuable in a time of an emergency. Fuel, if you don't have it on hand, by fuel I mean whether it's propane or um, you know you've collected you know uh, wood to burn. Um, even the time that it takes to split wood and to bring wood back to your house, that is time, that's fuel. That's fuel that your body, that's calories that, you know, you're beginning to use. So whenever we talk about water storage, we want to have it ready to use in a time of emergency, not pull it out and then have to treat it. That's the last, uh, that's not the time that you want to have to begin to treat your water. The next item is bleach. You can use bleach to kill most of the microorganisms. You can add about eight drops of fresh liquid household chlorine bleach um, to every about four liters, or in other words, one gallon of water, and that will kill most organisms. It's going to still be safe for you to drink. Probably let it sit for 30 minutes to an hour or so. Um, that's only household bleach that doesn't have thickeners, scents, or additives. Don't use all you know the bleaches that have all those. You want a non-scented bleach. And um, again, bleach just like boiling doesn't necessarily address the issue of toxic contamination. Now this is where filters come in. Uh, you're going to want to have filters on hand to address any toxic contamination. I, in my different bug out bags, vehicle EDCs, etc., I've got three different types of water filters. I've got a live straw, I've got a Sawyer water filter, and I've got a pure sip water filter. Um, again, these are real simple, you know, kind of on your person. They're not going to filter a whole lot of water and a lot of the heavy contaminants. So, you know, they'll get you by in a pinch, but if you're in a long-term situation, obviously that's not going to filter out water for, you know, um, you know, like cooking or other things that you're going to need eventually do. But they're good to have on hand nonetheless, and I'll provide links in the description below to some of the ones I use. Um, now, on the issue of filtering, I've really researched this for a while, and you're more than welcome to do it yourself. You may come to a different conclusion, but I've found so many different filters that you can pick up on the market. Uh, some are better than others. And some are cheap, but at the end of the day, if you know if my life's on the line, I'm not looking for cheap. Uh, the one that consistently stands out, that's you know seems to be the most popular and really gets the job done, is the Berkey water filters. Uh, they're expensive as all get out, but the beauty of something like that is you can use them in everyday life. It's not just you have to pull it out of the closet, pay $100 for a filter, and then never use it. You know, or maybe use it once in 10 years. Uh, I just like the fact that I can actually, when I think about prepping, I can use things in a practical everyday context, and a Berkey water filter is awesome for that. And, you know, apart from all the, you know, things that it can do to clean your water up just for your family, um, it's my recommendation, and uh, it's what we use in our home. And again, I'll provide a link in the description below. So the final note about water preparation, remember, two is one and one is none always always have backup options when it comes to water i have you know i'm going to continue to build and expand upon my water uh, storage because where i live it's uh, it's for all intents and purposes it's a desert and i just want to make sure that we are prepared you know should we have an earthquake or some other catastrophe uh, that could take down the you know the water system here 
As always, I'll provide links in the description below to the different websites and products that I talked about in this video that I use personally. As always, if you find these videos useful, please click on the subscribe button below. And I always find it interesting the different comments that people post on my videos. Um, some of the great information they provided that I never would have thought about. I'm learning like everyone else, and I always enjoy to hear your feedback. As always, be safe out there. Thank you.